Welcome everybody and in this video I'm testing out this Canon R6 and the RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens and I'm specifically photographing the long-eared owls here in northern Serbia. I am largely testing this here in Kikinda and later in the video I'm going to do a twilight shoot to see how this combination copes with the low light. Now at the moment I'm travelling to various towns and villages here in the north of Serbia photographing the, ro the roosting long-eared owls. They come in amazing numbers in the winter. I've done it for a few years. This year it's been fantastic. Now the first thing to mention about this combination is just the size and the weight from what I'm used to. It's just absolutely amazing really. To me this hardly weighs anything, I can literally hold it with one hand, absolutely not a problem. Uh, the camera is about I think 650 grams, the lens I'm not too sure but it is so easy to hand hold, very light indeed. Uh, this has been perfect for me, I've been shooting a lot of the owls, uh, individual portraits and group shots, I've been shooting a lot of that, in fact pretty much all of it handheld when I've been visiting various places. And it's been perfect as well when we've been travelling in the car. So a lot of the time we've been sort of getting in and out of the car and having something this size and this weight I've just basically had it on my lap and then just got, got the camera out when I needed to. So hand holding with this combination has actually been really really enjoyable not just because of the weight but because of the ability to use a slower shutter speeds than what I'm used to. Now I've actually been sort of trying to push it and test it out just to see how it is and when I've zoomed in to, to 500 millimeters on this lens uh, I've actually been able to get pin sharp pictures uh, certainly at 1 200th of a second 125th I think down to about a hundredth of a second so a hundredth of a second I was still managing to get what looks like very very sharp images uh, hand holding with this lens zoomed to 500 millimeters it has got image stabilization but it's also I think due to the IBIS um, the stabilisation of the camera at the IBIS don't ask me exactly how it works it's way too technical for me uh, but it does kind of it kind of works in different directions and it helps to stabilize it and uh, seems to do a really good job so absolutely ideal for hand holding now I'm generally not a big fan of zoom lenses I just don't seem to get on with them I just rather have a fixed lens but having a zoom lens in this situation where I'm photographing Alrus is a real advantage uh, because it gives you such flexibility sometimes you want to try and get group shots just to show the amazing number of owls that are up there in the trees so having the zoom facility being able to pull back and get a wider shot is really really useful. So what about the focusing on this camera? Well I've never before used the animal or bird eye auto tracking focus and it's been really interesting to test this out in the field and see how it works. Now the roosting owls are not necessarily the best subjects for this which I'll come to in a minute but I did test it out just a little bit back in the UK um, using the bird photography hide that's close to home. So I tested that just on pretty much static subjects, birds coming onto perches and onto the pool. And I was pretty amazed actually how well the focus worked. Now here photographing the roost, it's a different situation. Uh, given that they're up in the trees and they have branches in front of them, leaves, it can be a really difficult situation to focus anyway. Um, I wouldn't expect the eye tracking really to do the best job. So I did test it out and that was pretty much the case. Photographing the long-eared owls up in the trees, the 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 eye tracking uh, didn't really manage it, and I wouldn't really expect it to. So what I actually did was often switch to a single focus point. So I've been using a single fo focus point a lot of the time for individual owls and when they're in groups as well. Uh, I've still been keeping it on servo because I wanted to test that. So it's on servo tracking, servo tracking with a single focus point, And I'm just placing that focus point um, on the bird's head. And that has actually been performing really, really well. Probably, you know, better than my... 1DX um, different lens combinations would I think. The image quality I'm currently getting from this camera and lens combination I would say is very very good. I would compare it to my 1DX so in actual fact I'd say it's very very similar. Um, what I'm finding with the ISOs is you can definitely start to see uh, deterioration, degrading of the images once you get into higher ISOs and I'm looking through the images I've got, raw files I've got on the, on the laptop, I'm finding if I look at images from about 6400 I'm definitely seeing that and certainly anything above that. 
Um, but if you're shooting, for example, 800, I think it's a good test for a lot of cameras. Uh, I shot a number of images at ISO 800, and they just look really, really clean with this lens, about f7.1, f8, just absolutely no complaints, really, really good quality. There seem to be kind of different ways you can get to things uh, with the display, the menu. Uh, to me, it feels like maybe there's a few too many things going on, too many options, but that might just be because I'm not quite used to the camera. Uh, I'm still getting a bit mixed up between when to use the dial and when to use the wheel on the back and things like that. But there's a lot of options that allow you to change things quickly. And, and I do like the Q menu on the back. The ISO, interestingly, it took me a while to find that, is actually on the front. Uh, as I've got it set up, it's on the front which is also the, the, the MFN button, which I'm also using to change the autofocus mode. By the way, if anyone knows where I am, please let me know down in the comments box below. Uh, just walked out of Kikinda, past the market, keep going, stood on a bridge, because I've no idea, but it's really nice. Uh, one of the things I've never been too sure about with the mirrorless camera is the viewfinder, and I'm definitely having a different experience with that. If you have a DSLR, and you look through the camera, you're basically looking at what you're seeing with your own eye. It's pretty much the same. It's an optical viewfinder. But with the mirrorless camera, you're basically looking at a screen. So it is very different. I can't say I'm really enjoying that, uh, but I guess I get used to it over time. One of the things I did notice is sometimes when I'm looking through, and then if I like move the camera, particularly quite quickly, then it all seems to sort of like go a bit fuzzy. Like if you move a video camera re really quick, uh, almost makes me feel a little bit nauseous actually. So certainly don't like that in terms of the battery power uh, we've been out shooting you know for pretty much all the day in daylight hours and I just say it's coped reasonable it's probably a bit better than I expected now that is without really doing much video it's been almost all stills when I've been out and about um, using you know the all the electronic facilities pretty much I say it's certainly reasonable it's not something to worry about too much I've got two batteries with me so I should be covered and the screen on the back of the camera, the, the flip out screen, I am really enjoying using the screen. I've never had a camera with a screen before. This is the first time. Now, this is particularly useful for what I'm doing now because photographing the owls, one of the difficulties is you're usually looking up at them in the trees and before, to make it more comfortable, you either need like a really high tripod in fact, you can use an angle finder, uh, otherwise it's very difficult to kind of look and your neck gets quite uncomfortable. So having the screen is absolutely perfect in these situations. I'm just able to flip the screen out to see what I'm doing and it's much more comfortable for me. What I'm going to do now is to try and photograph these owls using artificial light. There's a few owls here perched up in the trees and there's actually some street lights quite close by. So when those street lights come on, um, hopefully it's going to illuminate the owls and you can get such an amazing contrast. Especially, they've just come on, literally just come on now as I'm talking, you can probably see it in the background. So I've, I've got one owl up here perched reasonably high up in a birch tree and it's really really close to one of the lights so i'm hoping i'm gonna have a look in a minute i'm hoping that it's going to illuminate it and we're going to get a really nice contrast between the twilight blue sky and the artificial lights and we're going to see how this camera does and how it copes I just think this makes for such interesting pictures. I just think it's so unique. And also sometimes, depending on the position of the street lighting, you can actually get a bit of backlighting. And it looks like maybe there's a tiny bit of backlighting on the ears of this owl. The main issue here is actually the movement and using a slow shutter speed. So what I wanted to try with this camera, the R6, is the electronic shutter, because that's completely new to me. Um, because you shouldn't really get any vibration with an electronic shutter. If you've got everything nice and stable, uh, use a remote or maybe a timer, then you should be able to use really shutter speeds as slow as you want because there shouldn't be any vibration and you should be able to get pin sharp pictures. So in this situation in low light, that was the plan. However, what I didn't take into account was the movement. So it doesn't matter how stable a camera is and the electronic shutter, if there's some movement of the bird, then slow shutter speed just isn't going to work and the problem here isn't so much movement of the bird 
it's actually movement of the tree so it's quite windy today and the branch it's on there's just a bit of movement that's all it is just a little bit of movement of the birch tree swaying so I've actually tried to push it initially. I started off with a shutter speed about a fifth of a second to test this out with the electronic shutter, but there's too much movement. So I've then tried, I've gone down to a thirteenth of a second, and a thirteenth of a second is looking okay. In this situation with lots of branches and leaves in the way and you're looking up it's so difficult to focus so I've instinctively I've just gone for manual focus and zoomed in like on the screen and I've just focused it I've done it that way but I'm now going to try an autofocus so in this really low light um, I'm going to try an autofocus I'm first going to see how a single shot works I'm just going to use one focus point um, single focus point autofocus if I can remember how the camera works I'm actually going to focus in the background off it and so it's deliberately out of focus and then I'm going to come back onto the bird. It is doing it sometimes so it's being just a bit inconsistent and I think it's doing pretty well actually. Occasionally it's focusing straight on and then other times it's just kind of going in and out a little bit so it's, it's being a little bit inconsistent um, with that one focus point as it is now but there's also a bit of wind when the leaves are blowing in front that's just making it even harder for the camera but I think it's doing very good considering the light and now I'm actually going to try the the eye animal eye tracking autofocus which these cameras have which are excellent this is where it can just automatically pick up the eye on the animal on the bird um, I don't think this is going to do it from my little bit of experience I had yesterday and um, yeah I can see it's not really doing it. It's not finding. It's not finding the head of the bird. If it doesn't find the eye, then it tends to go for the head. It seems, which is usually good enough. But it's just not. Uh, it's actually picking on some leaves now. So I'm not surprised on that at all. Yeah, it's not doing that. As I said, I'm definitely having some difficulty with the movement, so I can't use a slower shutter speed as I really wanted to to keep the ISO a bit lower. So I'm now gonna. I'm gonna put the ISO up higher, which is gonna get me a faster shutter speed to help stop that movement. So this is the case now, by doing that, I'm probably gonna to have to put the ISO up really, really high. So I'm gonna push this now. Um, so where are we? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna to go to 4,000. 4,000 ISO. Yeah, I can definitely see some movement. There's a little bit of blurring there. It's just not quite pin sharp. So I'm now gonna to go to ISO. I'm going to go to 8000 now, um, my shutter speed now is, it's about right exposure, a 20th of a second. I'm just going to check the focus, uh, I'm going back to manual focus because I just think it's safer for this. Oh he's preening, he's preening now. Now that might be a problem because there's more movement again, this could be a problem. This is kind of showing one of the limitations of this setup, which is the lens, which I've had good experience of so far. I think it's an excellent lens, uh, but it's only 7.1. So what's happening is when I'm trying to kind of push the camera, uh, I'm trying to push the ISOs more. Um, I've got to push the ISO more because I don't have as much light with this camera. And it's just getting starting to get really grainy now. I mean, I've put it on uh, 8,000, 12,800. It's looking really, really grainy to me on the screen, which I'm not really too surprised with. So if you had like an f4 and an f2.8 then you wouldn't have to push the ISO as much as that. This is so difficult and it's largely because of the wind and the movement so I've just been trying different combinations all the time, uh, just trying different combinations. The aperture's always been the same on f7.1 because I just need as much light as I can get but I've been varying the shutter speed and the ISO, uh, some with a higher shutter speed and a higher ISO, some with a slower shutter speed and a lower ISO and then um, you know everything in between. Battery's now down to one bar. Uh, it wasn't a full battery. It's probably about two thirds full, I reckon. I've uh, been here for a, about an hour, I'd say, shooting, taking pictures, a little bit of video, using the screen um, for absolutely everything, playing back, zooming in. So that might give you an idea, a little bit of battery power, but I think it's done reasonably well. I've actually managed to pick the owl that stayed the longest. So the other owls that are up in the trees, it looks like every single one of them has flown off, has left the roost to hunt. But this guy is still here. So I've had the most amount of time I could have had with any owl, which is pretty good. 
but as for me, I think it's time to go make some spaghetti bolognese. So this is definitely not a full-on in-depth review on this camera and everything it could do, but more just to see how it worked for me out in the field, specifically photographing the owls here in Serbia. Uh, there's a few things I would definitely say about this camera. One thing I forgot to mention is the lag. Uh, now there is a bit of a lag as you usually get with mirrorless cameras, and that is frustrating. Uh, when you know when I pick this camera up, sometimes to my eye it's black. It takes about a second to kick in when you press the shutter. Um, now you might be able to change that in the menu a little bit to affect that lag, but then you might start using more battery power, I'm not too sure, haven't looked into it that much. Um, all I'm doing now is just every time I pick up the camera it's half pressing the shutter just to kick it into life and that makes it a bit faster. So it's not the end of the world, but you know, it's something to be aware of. In terms of size and weight for this combination, you just can't go wrong. The camera and this lens combined, it is just so light, so easy to hand hold. Uh, you can carry around for a very long time and it's just very, very flexible. And the ability to get sharp images handheld is a real, real bonus. Uh, in terms of the focusing, the eye tracking, my limited experience of the eye tracking has been very, very good photographing small birds. Uh, in more difficult situations where you've got uh, things in the way, it's more cluttered, then I wouldn't rely on that. I'd switch to a single focus point. Now, in terms of image quality, I'm really just going to say that this, this combination, the images I'm getting out of this with this R6 and the 100 to 500 I would say are very comparable to my Canon 1DX if anything they are slightly better and I would probably expect that because it's a slightly you've got slightly more megapixels but very very comparable to me in pure image quality in you know the the, the detail that it captures and how clean the images look and also how the noise capability is at higher ISO. So very, very similar. So I'd say if you've got something like a DX and you're thinking of buying something like this for an increase in image quality, then I'd say probably, in my opinion, it's not really worth doing. But what you do get with a camera like this is it's more to do with the functionality rather than image quality, I think. It's more to do with uh, actually taking the pictures, making your life easier, and things you can do with this. And also the silent shutter, which I mentioned, which is a massive bonus for any wildlife photography. But not really an issue here for the owls. And battery, I think just be aware that, you know, the battery, if you're coming from a DSLR, then the battery uh, isn't gonna last as long. It might surprise you a little bit. And particularly if you're doing video, I found that it, it really did seem to zap the battery quite a lot using the video. And the screen, absolutely love the screen. Perfect for this type of photography and any situations where it can make you just a bit more comfortable. And I think it'd be excellent for macro photography. Things where you have to get down on the ground, for example, in this situation, I'm looking really up, I'm looking up high to the sky. The screen is a real bonus. I do hope this video has been useful information on this camera and lens combination. I hope you've enjoyed the long eared owls here in Serbia. If you want to see more tutorials, then check out my channel. If you're not subscribed, do click on the subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. One of the things I've never been too sure about with mirrors, camera, half hair.